Good morning, everybody. Jim Feist here in Las Vegas, and today we have Money Mike back with us. Mike has a record this year in the NFL, 29 winners, 12 losers. Mike, you got to be cashing in like crazy. The bookmakers have got to be running away every time they see your phone number come across their board. I I hope they do. They should run because sometimes you get in a zone, Jim. You know, we've been doing this, like I said last week, between us 100 years. You know, <laughs> that don't mean we're old. It just means we've been around a while, we'll say. So, uh, yeah, 29 and 12. <laughs> 29 and 12. I got some breaks last week in those first four games. I start with Green Bay, which, well, they won pretty big. But Detroit, Cincinnati by the hook, and Pittsburgh. I mean, one's a last play, one's a missed extra point, one a field goal don't go. And, you know, so I got, but you got to be good and lucky. That's what I tell my, that's what I tell everybody. You have to have a little bit of luck. This isn't easy. And then, you know, I came up with, I had, I had Tampa Bay and I also had the Rams. My loser was New England because I figured that they lost two in a row and, you know, maybe they would, uh, maybe they wouldn't lose that third game in a row, but they did. So, uh. What are you gonna do? But then I hit the I hit the teaser with Pittsburgh, Detroit, Chargers, and the Saints. So I don't count them in the twenty nine and twelve. But we're gonna be on to week eight, and in week eight, I'm gonna have eight plays for everybody. You know that should be a good sign, I think. Well, you said you went from uh, Mickey Mantle, which was number seven last week, and now you're going to Yoga Be- Yogi Berra, number eight today. That's correct. They were two of my favorite uh, childhood. Uh, Heroes growing up in the late 50s, 60s, still a Yankee fan. I met Mickey, I met Roger, I never met Yogi, but I've seen him play a lot of times. So, uh, yeah, they're my boys, but, you know, I just look at the sheet and whatever numbers are talking to me, and uh, I play. If there's four games, there's four. If there's seven or eight, whatever it is, it is. I don't. I can't back away and just say, well, uh, you know, because there's that many, I know the more you play, it gets dangerous, but... You know, seven, I went six and one, so uh, I think we can have another good week. I, another good week. I feel very optimistic, you know. it's uh, So far, we're, uh, we're in a zone, and the breaks are going our way. About three, four weeks ago, I lost those kind of close games. That one week, I think I went two and four, and, you know, some, that's going to happen. When you're gambling, it's going to happen. But when you're, you know, when it's falling your way, keep pressing it up. That's all I could say. Well, that's exactly right. When you're when you're losing, you don't see things good. You got to back off and get conservative. When you're winning and seeing everything clearly, you got to go for it because they're the kind of moments that you look for in life. And tonight we have a game. We got the Atlanta Falcons visiting the Carolina Panthers. There's some weather on the East Coast. It's called a hurricane called Zeta Z E T A. It's causing a lot of damage, a lot of rain, heavy winds. But I don't believe that's going to have a an effect on the game, although at the moment there's a little bit of wind there, uh, but I don't think it's going to affect the game. But we have seen some money come in on the dog. Atlanta's got a little bit of money, not a lot, a little bit. And the um, the under is looking like it's getting a little bit of money right now, but not heavy. Yeah, I, I see that, but I know they were talking about uh, uh, McCafferty uh, supposedly going to might play. He was practicing Monday, but I don't think he's a go tonight. But this is number one play for me. I'm going to be on Atlanta plus two and a half because that's the kind of number I like when the home team is, is favored by less than three. I, I, I play those other sides no matter if they're, how good they look or how bad they look. You know, you got to take those teams like, like Detroit last week. Plus two and you know, plus two on the road, and you know, different t- games. I like to take those road short dogs, so I'm gonna. That's gonna be the number one play for me. Even though I have a big bet on the total with Atlanta total wins, I say they won't win seven games, and they're one and six. Well, they could get a win tonight or cover two and a half. It could be a close game. So uh, we're gonna start with the Falcons tonight, Jim. What do you say? Well, like I said, I'm I'm leaning to the under. Um, but I, I don't have a side play on the game at all. I do see this. It opened three, Atlanta three, and the game now is now Atlanta one. Or no, excuse me, the uh, Panthers are one. They op- Panthers open three, and it's now one. 
So there's, there has been money, and it's more money right now, coming in on Atlanta. And McCafferty, McCaffrey will not play because the field conditions there are a little bit wet because they did have rain, and they will have rain throughout the game. Not heavy. It's not projected to be heavy. You never know about weathermen. But um, they are not going to play him. They want, uh, they want to give him one more week. Well, that's probably the smart thing to do. You know, let them let get healthy and all because it's a long season and he's the key guy. But I think they play, I think they, I think they play a little better without him, really, you know, because they, they don't feel obligated where they got to get him the ball like, oh, like Beckham or Antonio Brown. Sometimes these quarterbacks, uh, they get where they feel they got to feed these guys, feed these guys. They leave, then they don't, they don't spread the ball. They don't spread the joy around. So, you know. <laughs> Uh, whatever the conditions will be, I grabbed two and a half, so maybe I'm on the right side with the money, Jim. Well, you de- well, you definitely have the the best of the number. Uh, we go to the uh, Colts are going to visit um, the Lions. The Lions have won two games in a row. They got lucky to beat Atlanta last week because Gore couldn't stop himself from going in the end zone. But uh, the Colts are um, a two and a half or three point favorite. Actually, there's some three showing up right now. So they're now a three-point favorite at the Lions. Yeah, well, this is bad. this is a second play for me. I'm going to take the Lions plus three at home. They're playing well. I know Indy's coming off a uh, bye week, and their defense is good against the run. But the Lions play exciting ball with uh, with Godley uh, Stafford as a weapon there last week. I didn't care if uh, Gurley fell down and they kicked the field goal. It would have been the 17-16 final. I was getting two. But when they scored, I figured, well, I'm going to lose this game. But they marched down, and on that last play, you know, they got they got the score. So uh, it was good for me. But I've had some – you get good and bad with the Lions. But, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a take because they're, I think they're playing well. We don't like the coach that much. But I'm going to use the Lions plus three, and I'm also going to use them – I'll give you the teaser I'm going to use, Jim, as, and then we'll go on to the other games. I'm going to start with the Lions plus ten, the Vikings plus fourteen, Tennessee plus one, and the Bears plus 11. So you got four four pluses there in the teaser, and the teasers have been doing well for me also. But I'm going to take the Lions plus three, Jim. Okay, that's two plays down there, and you got the teaser up. The next game we go to, uh, we go to the Vikings and the Packers. Uh, the Packers are a seven-point home favorite, and this is a rematch from uh, game one of the year where the Packers beat them pretty heavily. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take the Vikings. Already, I got seven with the Vikings. I'm gonna grab that seven. When I seen six and a half, it really turned me on to them because that's another number I use when a home team is six and a half. It seems they can't. You know, if they're that strong, why aren't they seven? But you know, I I grabbed seven. You know, for for a guy that I deal with, but I know there's a lot of six and a halves out there. But uh, I think they got to show up and play a pretty good game. The Packers are without Jones. I believe the running back, he's still banged up, even though Devontae Adams is back. But if the Vikings have anything and if Zimmer has anything left in his tank, gee, don't they show up one week and, uh, you know, give a real good effort? Because they've had a good run the last few years, Jim, you know? Yeah, they're a 1-5 and five team this year. They're pretty, it's, it's pretty ugly for them right now, and the Packers are 5-1. and one. Um this is this is the haves and the have-nots, and nobody expected the Vikings to be this bad. But uh, right now they're they're playing pretty bad, so they could. This is a big bounce back game for them if they have anything in their tank. I'm not involved in the game at all, but uh, uh, you know I just I know Dalvin Cook is coming back for the Vikings, and that's big, and that could make a difference. But you also are looking at the situation there. And I'll give you some information about weather. And I think the Packers are one of those teams where we're going to be seeing, seeing some ugly weather. Um, Green Bay Packers. Look the, let me look this up. It's 30... Well, I got My screen is refreshing, so let me see here. I got this. The Packers, 34 degrees, windy, 26 mile an hour winds. Now, that... What that does to me, that makes me think that the game is going to 
maybe go under, and we're looking at the game going from 55.5 to 51. I already bet this game under. I got a better number than the 51. So, and, and when you start cutting down the number of points in a game, if you're on the dog, you got a bigger percentage chance of covering because there's less points overall being scored. So that that's significant. And the fact that Dalvin Cook is scheduled to play for the Vikings, that also helps their running game. And uh, so there's a little bit of an edge there. And I've seen a little bit of money for the dog. I don't see any six and a half, but I do see seven with the dog favored. So that means that their possibility could go down to six and a half. Yeah, I hear you. I think it'll be a running game. And like I said, Jones is out. So that's then uh, Green Bay uses Williams. I believe he's the BYU kid. And he's good too. But Cook, with Cook coming back, like I said, they're off a bye. Division game, you know how me and you, we like those division dogs. So I'll take the seven. I, like I said, I even teased it up to 14. But when I see six and a half, it made me look the Vikings way, Jim. So, But that's only, that's three plays. I still have five more, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, that goes. I, I know you don't like those high number plays, but what could you do? Well, I, I like you the like? you know that that that's it, you know you're, you're uh, twenty nine and twelve, so you can afford to throw some stuff out there and and go go for it. If you're hot, you go to go for it. The next game is the Patriots and the Bills, and this this is really a mishmash. Uh, the Bills have fallen off quite a bit. They're not playing well. Um, Josh Allen is just not a consistent passer of the ball. He's very inaccurate. Um, he has, I mean, he can run. He's a big kid. He's very talented. But his passing is uh, very erratic. This game, and this is another bad weather game, and you're looking at rain and windy 18 miles an hour. And, of course, when I talk about the weather, we're going by what the weatherman says, and we never can 100% know that we're getting good information, but uh, we're looking at it. We're seeing some movement here. The game's open 46. It's down to 41, and uh, the game is either three and a half or four. The Bills are favored, and we, you know, the Patriots have really had some problems uh, lately. Their quarterback situation. Cam Newton has looked absolutely horrible, um, and the you know so. We don't know. Is this a throwaway season for the Patriots? Or are they going to keep trying? And you know, this is this is this is kind of wacky for us to talk about the Patriots being this bad. Well, I think they are that bad. I think that's why Brady left. They didn't have any weapons, and they were not getting them any weapons. Uh, I laid I laid three and a half with Buffalo. This is play number four. It's time to show that they're the team now of the AFC East because I think the Patriots are going to struggle for a little while. Uh, They've lost three in a row. I think you got to fade them. They're talking about trading Gilmore, so what does that put in his head? You know, how hard is he going to go? I don't know. Maybe he goes hard, but it's time, time for Josh Allen and the, the running game, the receivers, to play some defense. I mean, last week they, they played a lackluster game. I guess they were looking for, uh, towards playing the Patriots this week, who they've had a hard time getting by <laughs> over the many years, 20 years, I, I would say, since Brady's been with with the, the Patriots, so it's time, to, it's time to step it up. You're at home, whatever the weather is, it is. But uh, let's see how good Josh Allen and the boys can be. I think it's a definitely a play on them. I, I think the I, I think the Patriots. Uh, I'm not saying they gave up, but I just think they, you know, they they just don't have a lot going on. Jim, they lost four or five of those defensive guys, went to other teams, retired, whatever. I mean, you know, we know Bill Belichick's the best, but. You know, if you don't have the material, sometimes it's hard. And, you know, Cam had that COVID, so who knows? He still might be a little weak from that. I don't know, but he's, he's shown bad form like he did before he got injured a couple of years ago. So I, I, don't, I don't see how he could play on the Patriots anymore. Well, we go to the next game, which is interesting. This is a game where the Titans had a chance last week to come back and tie Pittsburgh, uh, but uh, they blew the... Uh, the field goal at the end of the game, they have had some field goal problems this year. Very inaccurate. They're going to the Bengals, who are absolutely 
I mean, it's all about Joe Burrow. He's playing well. He's got a lot of talent, but the team itself is not very good. Uh, Tennessee is five and one. Bengals are one five and one. Um, the game opened Titans four. It's up to four five and a half right now. The game uh, also opened fifty five and a half. It's down to fifty three and a half. And we're looking at um, Cincinnati Bengals. Let's look at the weather situation. We've got. 51 degrees, which is not bad, and 15, 15 mile an hour winds. This is what's predicted. So that's not terrible. Um, we know that um, Tennessee has Tannehill. They got some a few wide receivers, and uh, of course they got Henry in the backfield, and we know he can run. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I needed them last week to miss that field goal because I had Pittsburgh at, at a pick, and I also used them in the teaser. I'm going to use Tennessee, like I said, in the teaser this week plus one because I think they go there to run the ball. I mean, Joe Burrow's playing hard. I like the kid. He, he looks good. Last week it was a shootout with him and Baker. But I just think Tennessee coming off the loss, they, you know, they need, a, they need to get back on track. And I only, like I said, I have them plus one. I wouldn't lay that the six or whatever the number is today. Uh, and if Mixon's out again, even though Bernard did play good last week, Mixon, uh, that hurt them a little. But, you know, they were in the game. I took them with three and a half. I had a, I had a lay 120 to get that half a point, but it turned out I was real smart doing that. I mean, you know, but 11 seconds to go, they missed the extra point, so I was celebrating. But uh, we'll see what happens. Like I said, I'm only using Tennessee in a teaser, so it won't be a play minus six for me, Jim. Okay, we'll go to the Raiders, our Las Vegas Raiders, who got smashed last week. They had some problems with their offensive line and the COVID, so it was kind of an off week for them. They're going up to the Browns. The Browns, of course, lost Odell Beckham for the season. He tore an ACL, and they beat they. Um, Baker had probably his best game as a pro last week, Baker Mayfield, but that that was against um, the Bengals who. He's had a real good record against the Bengals. He's not too good against anybody else, but the Bengals, he's 5-1 and one in his career. Um, and we got a game there. The Browns open three. They're down to two and a half, and the total has also come down because this is a Lake, a Lake Erie game. You know, they're, the Browns are very close to Lake Erie, and the weather there is going to be, um, well, it's, it looks like it's going to be a little bit cold. 40, well, that's not terrible, but the wind is 25 miles an hour, and that's um, that can be a problem. That can be a problem. When you get over 20 miles an hour, it can affect your passing game quite a bit and your kicking game. So the Browns um, went from 55.5 to 51, and uh, this is a game that I earlier in the week I bet under the total. I'm kind of a big bet, total better, and, and I follow the, the weather a lot. Um, and, and the... So we're looking at the Browns right now, two and a half and 51. Yeah, I hear you with that under bet, uh, Jim. I, li I like that myself. Well, the Raiders is a play for me. I, I grabbed three. I mean, I seen two and a half early, and, you know, my story, I like that number. But I, I was able to get three with the Raiders, and I'll take them. I think last week, you know, they had the COVID issues and this and that, and they had them play against the GOAT, and the GOAT showed up, and, you know, there was different <laughs> things that happened there. But I think the the Raiders this week got a full week of practice in. Josh Jacobs got to come back to how he was last year and in the beginning of the season now. He's had a couple sluggish games. He's, but the line got him, you know, they got to find some holes for him to run. Uh, and Baker, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get good. You're going to get bad. Uh, you know, he's becoming the Fitz magic of Cleveland to me. I mean, he makes some good and bad plays. Uh, they have... Uh, they have Hunt who could run, Chubb's out, so, you know, they don't have a big running game either, and you're talking about the wind and this and that. But I'm going to take a shot with the Raiders plus three. Uh, that'll be uh, play number five, I believe, on my uh, hit parade of eight plays. Go Yogi! <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to the next game. We're gonna. I don't know if you even want to talk about the Jets and the Chiefs. I could. I could skip that one. Go ahead, skip it. I have no opinion. No, no opinion. I, I, I don't either. This is that game is just a matter of whether the Chiefs want to pour it on or not. I mean, the the Chiefs, the Jets are just absolutely horrendous. That that's not even 
I know they'd be better than college teams because they're all professionals, but that's a pretty bad football team. And by the way, the Chiefs are uh, 19 and a half and 49 in the game, but that Mike and I don't like it. The Rams are going to be at Miami. It's an interesting game. The Rams came up pretty good game the other night against the Bears. And now they're going to go to Miami, and Miami made a big change. They went from Fitzmagic uh, to um, Tua, and uh, this is Tua's first game as a pro. It's in Miami. Uh, the Rams are three and a half and 46 at the moment. There's really been no movement in the game at all. Yeah, well, I have no, well, I have a little opinion. I, the Rams on a short week. I mean, I had the Rams last Monday night, and they showed up. That defense is, you know, for Tua, this is going to be, you know, it's a game to break in against, you know, you know Aaron Donald and, uh, and uh, you know, the different Ramsey and all them. The Rams will come to play. They need to keep winning. I mean, you know, they can't stop. They got to they got to stay uh, in good position in that NFC West uh, I'm interested to see how Tua does, but we know a rookie quarterback, first game, first year, whatever, you know, you don't see much. But I guess the coach down in Miami, they see that, you know, they, they see this is the time. They like what he's doing in practice and this and that, and they want to give him a shot. And I don't blame them. I, I think maybe it's a little early, but, you know, they're only 3-3. Three and three. It's not like they're 6-0 and uh, oh, or 5-1, and one, you know, and they're fighting for the best record. So... Eventually, he was going to be the guy, so give him a shot. I I just wouldn't lay four on the road with anybody down there. And Well, the weather shouldn't matter to the Rams. If it's warm, it's warm. The Rams, uh, you know, they deal with good weather in L.A., so I'm, I'm curious to see what two of them does, but, I, you know, I'm a Ram fan, but I'll sit back and watch. Yeah, it's 85 and humid down there, and it, the, the wind will be at probably 10, 12 miles an hour. Um it's a tough game to start a rookie against a, a pass rush like that, but he is mobile, and if he doesn't get hurt, he has injury problems in college. We just don't know how that's going to work out. And I guess you know Fitz, Fitzmagic isn't going to be their future. I mean, he's been around a long time. He's been playing really well, and they are 3-3, three and three, and they could win this division. It would not be out of the question that they could win this division. Um all you have to do is beat Buffalo and and Pitt and the and the um, and the Patriots, and they're not out of it. They're three and three, so so you know it's kind of like I guess they have to figure out who they got and if this kid can play. Otherwise, they're going to have to go for another quarterback next year because you know Fitzmagic can't hang around forever, and he I think this he's been around a long time, um, but he's been playing really good. And they might have split the clubhouse with this one because a lot of the players were very upset when they announced that they were going to start him, even though they do like him, but they like Fitzmagic and how hard he plays. So you might have a a split uh, locker room here on this one, and that, that will remain to be seen. The next game is interesting. This is the Saints going to the Bears. The Bears are just, they're five and two, but they... As a 5-2 and two team, their offense is just pathetic. Uh, I don't know what to say. Trubitsky, Foles, uh, neither one of them look good to me. And um, the Saints, Drew Brees, is, he's the tactician. Last week he was 12 out of 14 on third down, playing against Carolina. Carolina is medium on the, on the defensive side of the ball. They couldn't stop them. They won the game. They didn't cover. But... Uh, Drew Brees is tough, and uh, this is this is the thing about this. This is an indoor team going outdoors, cold weather, thirty six degrees, could be even worse than that, and uh, twenty mile, twenty two miles an hour wind. It's a late afternoon game in Chicago. Um, boy, I don't know. It, it, you, you just have to take that indoor team, put them outside, and hope for the best. I I personally would probably lean to the under uh, because I don't think I don't think the Saints are going to be throwing deep. Uh, I don't think they have the Brees has the arm to do that very much. I think they're going to grind and grind and grind. And the Bears' offense is absolutely pathetic, so I would probably lean to the under here. I hear you, Jim. Well, I'm going to play the Bears. I know their offense has been very uh, lackluster, and the running game is non-existent, but. 
You know, I'm going to take four with the Bears and uh, hope they rebound because their defense can play. They just need a little offense from Foles, a little running game, a little passing maybe. But, the, you know, the Saints will be without Thomas. And uh, like you said, it's going to be outdoors. It's going to be getting later in the afternoon there. It's going to be a cold day. You know, so who could, who's going to be able to run the ball? I mean, the Saints have gone there and won in bad weather before. So it's not that they can't, but... Uh, Brees is a little older now, and like you said, the arm, he's not going to be thrown downfield. So the Bears, uh, you know, should have a good game plan. We'll see what Nagy comes up with and his defensive coordinator. I believe he was the former coach of the Colts at one time. So, uh, you know, I'm going to take the four. I like the home dog, and uh, we'll see. I think the Bears rebound. I used, the, I used them in the teaser plus 11 also. So we'll see what happens, Jim. Okay. Uh, the 49ers go to the Seahawks. The Seahawks were a big disappointment last week in the way they, I mean, for Russell Wilson to throw three interceptions was incredible. Um, and, um, of course, their defense is absolutely pathetic. Um, they got a new defensive uh, player, but he can't, he can't start this week. He cannot play. So he has to wait to pass the tests and stuff on the COVID and stuff and but he will not be playing. He's going up against the 49ers, which is a this is a division game. It's a very important game. You got a four and three 49er game team against the Seahawks, who are five and one. That was their first loss of the year last week at Arizona. We all saw that. Um, this is a very this is probably the best game of the week. Like other than maybe Pittsburgh Ravens. I, I would imagine those two games are the best games of the week. And uh, right now you got uh, the Seahawks are 3 and 54. There's been a little bit of money on the 49ers. It went from 4 down to that 3. And you maybe see less than 3 because I'm seeing some uh, 3 plus 0, 2 plus 0, 3 on the dog. So you might end up seeing 2.5 at some point. All right, well, this, this is my big play of the week. Last week, Tampa Bay was. This week, I'm on Seattle minus three. They should have won last week's game, but they, you know, they let those things happen sometimes. Their defense isn't the best, but maybe that's why they're, they're going to get Dunlop now to help them out on defense. But I still like them at home. Whether Carson plays, they have Hyde, he could run. I just think Wilson, they've had, they've had real good success against the Niners. When the Niners... Last year, uh, you know, the Super Bowl team that lost, but they, they played them two tough games, Seattle and the Niners. So, uh, you know, the Niners have some more, uh, you know, some more injuries. Uh, a running back, uh, we know most are tough, but I don't think they have enough weapons, and I can't trust Jimmy G. I don't know how the weather's going to be up there on Sunday. Uh, I know you'll give us that report, but uh, I just like Russell. Coming off a loss, he's got the weapons and the receivers uh I think they want to stay in the lead in that division. Uh, I look for them to, you know, exploit that secondary of the Niners. And uh, I just think three's a, a nice, a, a low number, uh, in fact, in this game. I mean, I know the Niners have won two in a row, but, you know, they beat the Rams. They were pretty desperate that night at home. And they beat the Patriots, who have nothing. But then the Seahawks have had some wins against some <laughs> no-nothing teams either, really. But, but uh, I just... I don't know. I just really like this game. I'm a big Russell Wilson fan, Jim. What's the weather supposed to be? Well, it's a pri you know, we're both Russell Wilson fans. Uh, I was shocked at how b badly he played last week. But um, if it wasn't for that offsides on on the field goal, they still would have won the game by seven. But it was it was one of those situations, unusual because we talk about some bad weather around the country. There's always bad weather in Seattle. But <laughs> this week, there's nothing. 54 degrees, which is great. Clear skies, four mile an hour winds. That is like the most incredible weather this time of year in Seattle. So if that comes true, there there is absolutely no bad weather for this game. Well, then it's going to be, you know, it could be a shootout, but I'll, I'll put my money on Russell any day over Jimmy G. He's I, I, there's a lot of quarterbacks better than Jimmy G in my mind. He makes he, he makes a lot of mistakes. He makes mistakes. He he hasn't overcome that in my opinion. That to me, he's middle of the pack quarterback. I know they made a big deal of him coming from New England and backing up Brady and Shanahan. They made a big deal, but when it counted last year in the Super Bowl, what did he do? He didn't do well. So I can't. I I 
he's got to prove a lot to me for me to be a fan of his. I'll tell you that. So I'll I'll take Russell every day, Jim. Well, I I agree with that. I mean, Russell over most people, and Jimmy G is definitely a marginal quarterback. Um, they do have a good head coach, however, and he he does um, he is he's very capable, and that's a dangerous situation. I favor Seattle in this game, but I think we're going to actually see two and a halves. I'm seeing a lot of plus money on the dog here, so I'm I'm going to wait. If I get a two and a half or a two, I'll definitely bet. Otherwise, I'll probably just bet the money line on Seattle. Um, the Cowboys play the Eagles, and the Chargers play the Broncos. Now, the Cowboys and the Eagles are scheduled to be the Sunday night game. That's the primetime game. I cannot believe they're actually going to show that game. I mean, Dallas is absolutely horrendous. They are just absolutely terrible. They don't even know what they're going to do at quarterback uh, because of the injury to Dalton last week, and we know Dak is out. So I, I don't, I'm surprised they have not flexed this game out of that spot and put somebody else into it. But And maybe they will. It's only Thursday they could still do that. The next game would be the Chargers and the Broncos, and this is the game that there's no line on the board right now for this game because the Chargers play, somebody in the Charger organization, a player, I believe, tested positive. So now they're doing the tracing and to see what, who else is affected. So I don't know if you want to talk about either one of those games, but uh, right now, I, you know, I, Philadelphia against the Cowboys, it, Eagles, I'd take the Eagles over the Cowboys at this point because you don't really even know who the hell quarterback is for the Cowboys, and I'm sure down to a third-string quarterback, I can't expect much out of the Cowboys. Eagles are not that good, but they play hard, and um, they definitely have a much more established quarterback. No, you're right, Jim. Uh, I have no interest in either game, but when the Eagles are healthy, I think they're the best team in that division. I've seen a line of maybe nine and a half, but... I don't know why it's going to be the Sunday night game. I don't know. They should have moved the Seattle game or the Pittsburgh game to Sunday night. But, well, we'll see what happens. Like I said, it's only Thursday. Something could change. I don't know how late how late they can make that move. But, yeah, I have no interest in either one of those two games. So, let's well, see what happens. Well, the next, ga- the, next game, the next game is a big one. The Steelers at, at the Ravens. Now, this is, this is a big division game, a tremendous rivalry. The Steelers are 6-0, and and the Ravens are 5-1. And and uh, last year, Roethlisberger was hurt. He was out, and they had the Duck playing quarterback and you know, all the things. Now he's back. They're playing better. They haven't lost. Um, the Ravens opened 5 and a half. It's down to 3 and a half or 4. Ravens are still favored. The total went from 49 to 46 and a half, so there's a little bit of money on the dog. Um, as far as the, um, the weather is concerned, 55 degrees, mostly cloudy, 13 mile an hour winds. That's what's predicted. It's, uh, uh, it's That's a huge game, a very important game. Yes, it is, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Ravens. I've been on the Steelers a few games this year, and I've made money with them, but I'm going to take the Ravens. Uh, I believe Pittsburgh's due for a lot. I mean, and last week they almost gave that game away. They were up 20, and Big Ben made a few bad plays in that game, a few bad passes. They seemed to settle in on a 20-point lead, and they didn't realize that uh, Patty Hill and them can make a comeback, and they should have known that because last year they, you know, they played quite well at the end of the season, Tennessee and all. So I'm going to go with the Ravens coming off a bye. I hate to leave lay those half a point like there I'm doing there and with Buffalo but I just think you know Pittsburgh can, a, a loss doesn't kill them it puts them in a tie with the Ravens and they'll meet up again in on, in Heinz Field at some time down the line before the season's over so uh, I just think sometimes the Steelers get a little lax Big Ben gets a little bit you know complacent and all and I mean I like him he's one of the best but uh, I'm going to go with the Ravens this week figuring that Pittsburgh's due for a game uh a lot, because they've had a cup the Pittsburgh uh, Eagle game, and last week got a little close when they had big leads. So I think if they fall behind, they could be in a little trouble this week, Jim. Well, that makes up your eight plays. That Atlanta, 
Detroit, Minnesota, Buffalo, uh, the Raiders, uh, Las Vegas Raiders, the Chicago Bears, uh, Seattle Seahawks, and the Baltimore Ravens. That's eight plays, Mike. Money Mike, you're a machine. Money Mike, the machine. 29-12 and 12 in the NFL this year. Uh, I, <laughs> nobody, nobody that I know is doing that well. I'm doing well, but... A lot of my stuff is, I got a couple sides, but I play a lot of totals, as you can tell. So um, we, we look at the games a, a little bit differently, and we come up with different, different ways. We come, both make money, but nobody's doing better than you are. And that's smoking, that's smoking plays. Nobody's paying to hear this. It's all free. And... Um, Mike, I wish you all the best. Uh, anything else you want to talk about before we sign off? Well, I want to say thank you for all the accolades. We'll see what happens this week. But uh, I just want to say Tampa Bay Rays, you had the Dodgers where you wanted them, and Kevin Cash didn't know what to do. So, I, you know, anybody who's a big fan of his should rethink about that because throw the analytics out. I've never used them in all... All these years, maybe they work, maybe they don't. But you got to go with your gut. When you're hot, you're hot. And when a pitcher's hot, leave them in. And that's about all I could say, Jim, because I know me and you were on the Tampa Bay side, and we should have had a game seven. But we'll we'll go on because football's been great so far this year. That was only a a minor loss, very minor with Tampa Bay Rays. So well, let's, it, let's have a good week, everybody. Let's it, cash tickets. Yeah, T- Kevin Cash is not my favorite guy right now. I took him off my Christmas card list. Uh, <laughs> you know, the analytics have, there's a place for it, but there's also a place for knowledge. And when you're watching a guy mow down the other team and you've played, you've gone through six innings and he's, he's, he's nine strikeouts, nobody, one, one hit, one, then dunk, the two hits. Uh, I know is you know, maybe he's not used to going deep. But and I understand all that, but you can't bring. And then the, the other side of it is you can't bring a guy in that that had given up a run. I mean, he's a relief pitcher, and each of the last six times he'd come into a game, he's given up a run. Now, how the hell do you go from Snell, who's been mowing the guys down, to bring in a guy <laughs> that's been giving up a run each time he comes in the game? I mean, it's just if you go, if you do it, you go to somebody who's a little bit hotter. Fairbanks or somebody like that, it was just terrible. And and I hope that Kevin Cash can't sleep any more than an hour or two the rest of his life. <laughs> he deserves to have bad nightmares and and to, about what he did. I don't wish him bad. I'm only kidding. Uh, he's a he's a nice guy and um, he's done a good job. He's got the team there. He you know it's it's not a it's not a big money market down in Tampa where they pay a lot of money out. He did a good job getting them there. He made me a lot of money over the years. I like the guy. I like the way he manages, but I don't like that move at all. Anyway, Mike, all the best. Let's do it again. I'll see you for lunch in about an hour. All right, Jim. Take care, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> all right, bud. Bye-bye. And everybody, make sure you go to jimfice.com each and every day for good information, winning information. And you just got a bunch of picks. We didn't charge a penny. So we'll talk soon.